Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the recently detected comet known as Borisov and we'll discuss a little bit more about the potential of having a mission to this comet. Specifically, at least one paper that analyzes in detail why it's very unlikely that we'll ever make it to this comet, at least with current technology. Let's talk about this and welcome to What the Man. So currently this comet is still pretty far away and relatively difficult to see, but it's slowly coming closer and closer and at some point will be at the same distance as planet Mars. This is right now the only good picture we have of this comet and um, even this is probably not very detailed. Eventually by December of 2019 when it's going to be pretty close to us, we're going to have um, a lot more pictures and a lot more data to analyze this in more detail. But because of the way that this comet is moving, because of its speed and also because of its trajectory, unfortunately getting to this comet, specifically with a spacecraft or with a probe or really just basically landing on this comet, currently is going to be extremely challenging. So here's the thing, there's at least one paper that came out recently, the paper you can find in the description below, that does a very good analysis of all possible trajectories and essentially all possible approaches to the comet using modern technology, including of course the SpaceX Falcon Heavy that had its uh, maiden flight just over a year ago, and NASA's Space Launch System, both of which are currently um, the heaviest lifters capable of delivering pretty heavy loads to space and thus allows to launch relatively complex missions. But unfortunately, current engines still depend on chemical reactions. We still only have chemical engines that are the most efficient, and only the so-called ion engines have a little bit more efficiency, but they just don't have enough thrust to help us here. So in order for us to try to somehow catch up to the comet and possibly land on it and maybe even initiate some sort of a mission, we do need to launch a rocket that's capable of having quite a lot of power, a lot of efficiency, and can do so really quickly. In other words, the only way for us to really uh, try to land on this comet is to uh, launch a mission with the most powerful rocket, most efficient engines, and do so in a very specific uh, manner and also at a very specific time. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of the orbital calculations, uh, but in short, a relatively complex simulation was used and there are already quite a lot of tools available from NASA that allow you to pretty much very accurately predict uh, interception of an orbit or plot a course to a different planet in our solar system. But the one specific one that was used by the team behind this paper is known as the Optimum Interplanetary Trajectory Software. And just like a lot of other things in research, this tool is also freely available right here on GitHub. It was made by a person named Adam Hibbard, or is it Hibbard? I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but this person developed this really cool tool and has quite an extensive manual available for you if you'd like to try this yourself as well. Now anyway, let's go into the details of what the scientists behind this uh, simulation and behind this study discovered. Well, bad news, it's very likely we're not going to be making it to the comet anytime soon. Well, actually, possibly at all. One of the biggest reasons for this is that the optimal launch for both the SLS and the Falcon Heavy was unfortunately a year ago, specifically in July of 2018. So had we known that this uh, comet was coming and launched this mission a year ago, we would now be um, slowly headed toward it and would be approaching it and possibly even landing there in about a few months from now. Unfortunately, obviously we didn't know and um, we were not ready. The mission that could have been possible and could have been executed a year ago would easily bring a relatively large probe here, possibly two tons in mass, and uh, this would be enough for us to not just study this in detail, but also possibly bring a sample back, and this would be the first sample from an interstellar comet, or really anything from outside of our solar system. And this would have been possible even with just a little bit more fuel than a typical mission to Mars. So in that sense, we missed this chance, unfortunately. And because of this, well, we now have only one last chance left. And this is based on many different calculations and actually a very thorough analysis using all possible trajectories and all possible uh, mission plans. Now, the reason it's so difficult is because this particular comet moves really fast across the night sky. 
In comparison to a typical faraway comet, uh, somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system, this object here moves around 30 kilometers per second faster. And because of this, it's very, very hard to catch up to it and very hard to intercept. The other major difficulty being, of course, is that it's also very inclined to the rest of the solar system, as you can see in this image right here. And so unfortunately, using modern technology and um, engines with chemical fuel is just not really going to do it for us. There is, however, one last chance left, according to the authors behind this paper. So even though we missed the July of 2018 chance, we can still launch this other mission, a lot more complex mission, um, using a much smaller probe. Specifically here, they refer to something along the lines of a typical CubeSat or even several CubeSats that normally are really small but still have a lot of capabilities and more recently because of the LightSail 2 mission, we were able to finally show that CubeSats can also sort of navigate a little bit using of course the solar pressure to change their trajectory and to also modify their own speed a little bit. But the problem with this mission, as you can see from the image, is that it can only be launched in 2030. Specifically, actually, on my birthday of 2030. And I hope this happens. Whoever is going to be running SpaceX or whatever future company that's going to be around and prominent, you guys really should consider making this birthday present for me. But anyway, enough about me. The second problem with this mission is that, as you can also see here, it's going to take 15 years before we finally arrive at the comet known as Borisov. Why? Well, it's how the actual mission is planned. It needs to first use the beautiful Jupiter as a slingshot maneuver target in a very similar way that the Voyager probes used it back in 1979 and 1980. So here we use Jupiter to increase the speed in order to escape the solar system, but um, instead of passing behind Jupiter, as you see Voyager 1 doing right here, had it passed in front of it, let's try to do this right now, um, it would actually lose speed and this uh, slingshot maneuver would then make it come closer to the sun. And so right now this Voyager 1 in the alternative universe is actually going to be um, coming closer to the sun on its approach. So here if I were to zoom out, you would see that at its closest its orbit approaches the sun um, pretty much at the same distance as the Parker solar probe. And here, uh, by passing next to the sun, we can then change its velocity and its trajectory to uh, intercept the comet, which uh, would take it roughly around 13 years. So basically, after the intersection with the sun in 2032, for 13 years, this probe is going to slowly try to catch up with Borisov. And then it will be able to finally have the necessary data and pictures for us. And although this might sound really complicated, remember, the only other mission, very complex mission to the comet, was this right here, the Rosetta mission. And this took about 11 years of the probe traveling in space, finally arriving here and taking all the amazing photos that it took. But to reach this uh, orbit and to reach the comet, it needed to use a lot of slingshot maneuvers and uh, essentially just play a very slow catch up with the comet itself. All of this is of course due to the fact that uh, unfortunately our rocket technology is still not really that good. And unfortunately if we miss this chance, well then we'll probably never make it to this comet to begin with. Unless of course by then we invent a new technology or a new engine that will be able to accelerate faster and more efficiently. Because really the main problem right now is that our engines depend on chemical reaction. And unfortunately uh, because of this the majority of weight inside a typical rocket and inside a typical probe is um, dedicated to fuel and it's pretty heavy. So without the fuel, by using some sort of alternative technology that might not exist yet, or might exist but is still just not very good yet, we might be able to get there faster. On the other hand, the authors of this paper also propose the idea of actually preparing this mission in advance, because maybe we'll be able to detect another interstellar comet sometime soon, and so we might get lucky and if we launch the mission fast enough, we might be able to get there and finally investigate everything that we need to investigate and at the same time bring some samples back as well. 
Although a return sample mission would be ridiculously difficult because now you have to do all of this in reverse and try to return to Earth using pretty much no fuel whatsoever. And at the same time, this mission would also require us to have um, very similar heat shields to the Parker Solar Probe because this probe would be approaching the sun to use it as a booster and in order to change the trajectory. So it needs to be protected from the very powerful solar radiation at this distance. So bringing the shield will also add to the extra weight that this probe will have. But I guess the good news here is that we do have the technology necessary to initiate this mission and to actually land on the uh, comet in 2045. Hopefully I'll still be around and hopefully all of you will still be around to see all of this. But if not, well maybe we'll find another way to get there sooner. And unfortunately um, there is really no other alternative at least for this comet. The only other alternative is for us to keep looking and finding new comets, but for Borisov, this is the only other chance we have. Nevertheless though, we'll still get a lot of different observations um, and we'll be able to study this comet in a lot of detail pretty much for the next uh, year or so. It's going to be close enough to us that we'll be able to analyze its surface, its um, composition, and possibly even take some really good shots of the comet as well. And even today, we've already discovered that the comet is quite red in color, suggesting organic elements, possibly uh, compounds of methane, that have experienced quite a lot of solar radiation, probably from its parent star. But anyway, until we learn more, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and I guess it's not a very positive video, but we do have hope. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. But either way, space out, and as always, bye-bye.